the Worldwide Telescope. Uh, the mystery continues. If you joined us yesterday on our third phase of moon episode, we spoke with UCLA astronomer Michael Rich, including the president of the Astronomical League, Ron Kramer. And we wanted to get their opinions in regards to the blue anomaly, the origami shaped interstellar craft we don't know exactly what it is but we did manage to get some uh, opinions and we do have an update from ron kramer from the astronomical league in regards to uh, his opinion of what this anomalous object is and it is a little different from michael rich from ucla astronomy division which he claims that it could be some kind of emulsion slag that is existent on the plate itself the one plate that took this anomalous uh, picture but he still didn't know exactly he said it was a very odd thing but he doesn't believe it's an interstellar craft but we did discuss some of the possibilities and when we got the word out to our friends at third phase moon we got a ton of people submitting their own evidence of anomalous things that they have actually discovered while looking at the app and one of them is this bluish circular a shaped object. Some people are calling it the mothership. But after doing some investigation and basically kind of recognizing what I was looking at, I kind of discovered that it's it's an observatory lens that's actually reflected on the plate itself. So basically I'm just putting this out there because I don't want to get people confused of what the anomaly is and uh, what we could explain about some of these other anomalies such as this uh, reflection of the telescope lens on the image itself. So we're clearing that up. But I also wanted to clear up before we get to the update is that uh, the discover or basically who discovered this and when apparently Scott Waring uh, claimed that he discovered this and maybe he did on his own and he was just looking through the worldwide uh, telescope.org and found this but I've found through some connections right here at third phase of moon that uh, Kendrick 1961 published this May 30th 2011 so this image has been uh, discovered and put out on YouTube in 2011, so uh, the discovery's been out, but I think the word hasn't gotten out because you can see it only has about 1,900 views, so I'm glad we did get the word out on this, and uh, we wanted to clarify and give a credit where credit's due who the discoverer originally was. I guess it was Kendrick, 1961. We're going to supply the original link, and... Scott may have found it on his own, just not being aware that Kendrick 1961 discovered it. So that's another thing that we wanted to clear up along the way. But there are some also uh, some speculations before we get to Ron Kramer's uh, response via email earlier yesterday, is that possibly this blue uh, origami shaped uh, craft, if that's what it is in the sky, is something that looks like this. We're bringing up some 3D model renderings of of origami shaped craft. I just basically looked it up on Google, origami star craft, and some of these images uh, popped up and it really uh, kind of resembles what we're looking at in the worldwide telescope image. Yeah, it's pretty cool, Blake. I like that the apparent look of it actually has a good resemblance of what was captured on the worldwide telescope. This is pretty amazing. And they are talking about science on how they do fold out and there's technology that mimics this origami basically paper shape unfolding craft absolutely here's a contest winner who uh, they challenged freelancers to design an origami uh, folding concepts for a space radiation shielding helping to make space travel safer so uh, if a design and there was a contest in regards to origami shaped uh, starcraft to traverse uh, through space a lot safer to uh, basically shield themselves from radiation this makes a lot of sense on uh, the structure and the shape of this if it is indeed interstellar Brent any thoughts there yeah absolutely for us to even understand what an alien civilization could create on interstellar travel uh, we don't know what kind of designs they could actually produce this could be an odd shaped craft but it could be actually something very practical for them people are uh, also stating why the blue color why does it stand out in a bluish uh, hue and some people are saying well it could be a reflection from uh, within our atmosphere again it could be emulsion that's reflecting on the lens 
And then some people are speculating that it could be some kind of a natural uh, protection around the ship using some blue uh, crystals. And I, I looked up blue crystals and I, I, I'm superimposing it on here just to kind of give you the idea that where, where it kind of does resemble uh, this craft with the angles and the shadows on how it intertwines with the object itself, right? The geometric shapes. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like could this thing maybe be natural, some sort of natural formation created by nature, our solar system of uh, chips of jewels floating in space? All right, so now uh, it is getting deeper into the mystery here because now Ron Kramer, the president of the Astrological League, sent me this email. Uh, yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah, he sent it to me within hours of my uh, quick phone call conversation I had with him. And he says this, the image makes little sense to me. On first glance, since there's no motion in the 2700 second exposure, the object was frozen in place amongst the background of the stars. With an exposure of that length, should have been more of a nebulosity around several of the objects imaged. Virtually none of the Barnard's loop is visible, save for a poor image of the horse head. He said, I did not have the time to compare the image star filled with reality, but the size of the object can be easily determined since the angular dimensions are apparent. He goes on to say that there is questions of the shadows. They are in different directions, implying whatever is causing the shadows is coming from multiple angles. Since the object is in focus, that the object is not an artifact or something laying on the optics of the telescope, basically going against what Michael Rich, who yesterday stated at the UCLA Astronomy Division, that it could be some kind of emulsion slag on the plate itself. So uh, the difference between Ron Kramer and Michael Rich is that Ron Kramer is saying that this uh, apparently could be in space and not something on the lens of the telescope itself. So there's a contrast. So in my opinion, their uh, evidence at this moment is inconclusive. He goes on and says, at the moment, I can't spend any more time on the analysis, but he says, I will look it into it further. He says also on the surface, it appears to be a scam and not a real image. Well, I sent him the original link to the worldwide telescope to make sure that, uh, if there was a scam, it was coming from the WorldWideTelescope.org site because it was uh, put up there originally. So he's questioning if the image is even real or perhaps something was added uh, to it after the original imaging. But he says that that's just his opinion and it really doesn't uh, warrant much more effort. So. I was wondering if he still thinks it's a scam or if there's some kind of a uh, interplay with the worldwide telescope. I think uh, whatever it is, as uh, Ron Kramer stated himself, that he says that he's going to compare it with the star field and see if it matches up with the reality. And we're going to find out about that. But he states that it's not some kind of artifact on the optics of the telescope. So that's a very clear statement in contrast to uh, Michael Rich over there at UCLA. Right. What we have here is a conflict of opinion. People from both sides of the department in heavy knowledge in this field are basically having a difference of opinion on what this is. And one states it's a slag or emulsion on the lens where Ron Kramer says that's exactly the opposite, that this would not be on the lens, on the optics of this lens. So uh, academics, highly from both fields, uh, again, contrast in opinions here. But I also wanted to say that Michael Rich gave us some good advice about how we have to track down the original plate and see uh, if, if this image is on the original plate. And he told us where to go find it. So that's uh, going to be our next assignment coming up. And we do have some updates in regards to the UFO phenomenon happening right now and uh, what's going on in Area 51. Some of our friends over there. Jason wanted to give us an update of uh, the activities going on in preparation for September 20th at Area 51. And uh, I say, let's just roll uh, the little road trip where they made it out to the little LEN. Take a look at this.
sea, it's only supposed to be 10 miles. If anything gets treacherous, we're punching out. No, we're not getting caught. We're not gonna break the rules. We're gonna have fun. Look at all the cars. There's a ton of people here. Every time we come here, it's nothing like this. I'm Samantha Travis. We are at the Little Alien. This is my family's bar. I grew up out here. Um, September 20th, oh, storm area 51. It's been a storm little alien for the past two weeks, I can tell you that. Well, we're t turning it into a music festival. It's called Alien Stock. Uh, we have 30 acres back here. Uh, 10 of it will be for the event and uh, the rest of it will be campsites, RV spots and parking. All right, over to the left, we've got area 51. You guys ready to see some UFOs? Look at that sign. What's that got on there? Jeez, that is covered. Psycho is where the other place is. So I think we go that way. Still on our way up to Area 51. Noticed we uh, picked up somebody in an unusual pickup truck. Tailgating us. Tailgating us. Well, maybe not tailgating us right now, but. Government. Uh, it's got some weird government sensors on the top of it. And um, some weird tint on it that we can't focus on it correctly. It's been following us for a while. It got real close and then backed off. I was just hanging out. We wanted to thank Jason for his uh, road trip video submitted to us right here at Third Phase of Moon and the updates uh, in regards to the activities going on before September 20th over there at Area 51. Uh, and we're going to be letting you know on what's going to be happening next over there. And the updates in regards to the blue origami shaped craft. If it is indeed something interstellar, we're going to find out. Keep your eyes on the skies, everybody. It's going to get incredibly wild. i got a feeling here in the next month or so. We'll see you again real soon.